its uh, organizations are reacting angrily after Zimbabwe's ruling party acknowledged that more than 100 activists were recently detained to keep them from protesting during a Southern Africa Development Community Summit held over the weekend. Authorities say they will only now start to release those who were detained. Columbus Mavunga has more on this story from Harare. Speaking with journalists in Harare, ruling ZANPF spokesman Christopher Mchangwa defended the decision to detain the activists to prevent them from protesting at Saturday's Southern African Development Community Summit in Zimbabwe. Those are deviants and they were dealt with properly. And we are very happy that they failed and they will never succeed again. This was their last inch at misbehavior. They will never get another chance again because now they know what happens when they try to behave in a certain man. And I'm sure there will be a good reason to free them up soon afterwards because there's no show to disturb them. <laughs> what they wanted to step is all so there is absolutely no reason to keep them in, at the status expense in jail after failing. We reward their failure by giving them their freedom. Rosalind Hansi, director of Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights, which is representing the activists, tells VOA that their detention is not a laughing matter. Every person in Zimbabwe should be worried where the ruling party openly admits that uh, it fully controls one of the key arms of government that is supposed to provide checks and balances and in fact to protect the citizens from excesses of the other two arms of government, the legislature and also the executive. The judiciary is a very key and central role in protecting citizens and ensuring that their rights are realized. And in this case, uh, you see them admitting that uh, there is uh, those people that wanted to protest. And of course, protest uh, is not criminal and it's not a privilege. You should not be negotiating or begging for it. Zimbabwe's Judicial Service Commission refused to comment Tuesday when contacted by VOA. Mary Lola, a UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights, called for the immediate release of the activists, alleging that some had been tortured during their arrest by Zimbabwean authorities. State prosecutors and the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission say they are investigating the allegations. The disrespect shown by Zanu PF spokesperson who laughed and joked about such a serious matter as his press conference is telling. The president, Mr. Menangwagwe, has shown how little he believes in the rule of law and how little he believes in Sadak's commitment to human rights as chairman. He wants to pretend that everything in Zimbabwe is rosy and fine, but it is not fine. These charges were a travesty. This is the kind of reputational damage Zimbabwe could do without. Since taking over in 2017, President Emerson Mnangagwa has maintained that he is a constitutionalist and respects the rule of law. But rights lawyer and legislator Daniel Molokele says the law is being selectively applied against democracy activists. Molokele is with the country's main opposition party, the Citizens Coalition for Change, whose members were arrested ahead of the SADAC meeting. I think what the ZANU-PF spokesperson said clearly confirms what we have always said is happening in Zimbabwe. There is too much political interference in the judicial system. There is no rule of law in Zimbabwe. We do not have a proper judicial system because it's clear that ZANU-PF is abusing our court system for its political benefit. Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights says it hopes the detained activists will be released soon now that the SADAC summit is over. The group says that after hearing from activists, they will decide what steps to take next. 
Press freedom robbies are expressing concern over Somaria's proposed new information law, which they say will hamper their work. The official information bill, which has already been approved by the Council of Ministers and sent to the federal parliament for approval, is designed to control the dissemination of information to the public. But robbies say there has been no consultation to get their input accepted. The National Union of Journalists, along with the International Federation of Journalists, Reporters Without Borders, the African Freedom of Information Center, and the Federation of African Journalists, warned in a statement that the bill threatens to undermine the country's democratic foundation. They add that it contains proposals that will restrict access to information and hamper the work of journalists in investigating and holding government officials to account, a duty they say is protected by Somalia's constitution and international human rights standards. They also add that the law will undermine transparency by shielding government officials from explaining decisions. The robbists want the Somali government to withdraw the bill so that it can be fully reviewed by relevant stakeholders to ensure that the law promotes transparency and is in line with African Union model law on access to information. The bill introduced introduces overly broad and vague exemptions on confidentiality that effectively obstruct access to critical information without clear harm or public interest tests, the proclamation stated. These exemptions unjustifiably limit the flow of information, violating the public's right to know. The government has urged that the law is necessary to prevent state secrets from being leaked to the public, particularly in relation to plans to counter the threat posed by Al-Shabaab. It also urges that it needs to restrict the sources of government information to ensure that important documents do not fall into the wrong hands. However, advocacy groups urge that the bill was drafted in secret without public or stakeholder consultation, which they say calls into question the legitimacy of the proposed law and risks fostering a culture of secrecy within Somalia's public sector, potentially leading to corruption. This clandestine approach not only undermines the bill's legitimacy and national support, but also risks entrenching a culture of secrecy within Somalia's public institutions and enabling corruption to flourish if it is adopted, the media promoters shared. The bill was seen as vague and lacking in clear definitions, especially the provisions outlining national security. I see what you teach, I do believe I always should have stayed 